Good morning, Miss Janice. Good morning. Welcome to church this Sunday morning. Good morning, beautiful people of Clarksville. I'm so glad that you're here and worship with us this morning. My name is Stephen Sauls, and I am the pastor here at Hilldale United Methodist Church, and it's my pleasure and honor to welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ to worship. If you are new with us or visiting from locally or far away today, we want you to know that we are so glad that you are here. We see you. We would love for you to let us know you're here by dropping your name or saying new in the comments below. And we want to make a $5 donation in your name to a charity that you choose. So if you let us know that you're new, we'll follow up with you and see which charity you would like to donate to. And we want to say a special hello to all of our members who are here each and every week. We are so grateful for you and we are glad that you are blessed by our services. We would love for you to take a picture and show us what you're doing this morning. Comment below, check in with each other, uh, share your prayer, re prayer requests, and just let us know that you're here and involved in worship. It is so good to hear from you each and every week. As we get ready, we are starting a new series today called Love Yourself. We'll be building up towards Valentine's Day and also getting ready for Lent. And we're going to be looking at, inside of the greatest commandment, what it means to love your neighbor as yourself and what it means to love yourself in the midst of times just like these. And so we're glad you're here to begin that journey with us today. We are excited about Lent coming just around the corner. We've got some exciting things planned, and we can't wait to get those out to you in the coming weeks. So be on the lookout for emails and letters coming to you to let you know when to mark your calendars and all of the special services and things we've got planned for you to take part in and to sign up for really, really soon. So be on the lookout for that. Now, let us continue in our worship service this morning with our call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. You are the one who created our innermost parts, O Lord. And the people say, you knit us together while we were still in our mother's wombs. Lord, we give you thanks that we were set apart. And the people say, your works are wonderful. Amen. Good morning, Lord. We are so grateful to be in your presence this morning, gathered together online and in community with each other and with you. Lord, we gather during this time to lift up our joys and our concerns, the ways that we have seen you at work around us, and the ways that we need you this week. We lift up from our congregation Lori Hadley and Laura Wicks as they are continuing to recover from COVID. We are also in prayer for Miss Lucy Herring as she is recovering and is back in the nursing home. Lord, we are so thankful for all the ways that you have given us our blessings in our life, whether that's communicating with friends and family, whether that's seeing loved ones from afar or close by. 
We are grateful for all the ways that we have opportunities to share your love with others. As we learn more about sharing your love, loving our neighbors as ourselves, let us take this moment of silence to lift up our prayer requests to God and feel free to type them in the comments below. Lord, you have heard our prayers. You are with us in our hearts and minds and souls. Let us now join our voices together to say the prayer that you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, our church has been so blessed this past year through the faithful gifts of tithes and offerings that you have made to continue the mission of God here in the Clarksville community through this church and moving to around the world. So we thank you so much for your continued support of the mission of God here in this place and through Hildell United Methodist Church. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, you have given us so much. You watch over us while we are awake and while we are asleep. You know our hearts and how we want to make an impact in this world. And we are grateful for the resources you have given us and we want to give them over to continue to build your kingdom on this earth and in the kingdom to come. Lord, bless both the giver and the recipient this morning in our time of offerings and tithes. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Hi, friends. Welcome to Hilldale UMC. This is the children's moment, and I'm Miss Kim, and I have my friend Miss Betty with me today. We're starting a new sermon series. It's called Love Yourself. And I thought, who better to be here with me today talking about love and loving you kids than Miss Betty. Miss Betty works in our nursery. And as you know, she has been here for years and she uh, loves kids and God has given her a passion for sharing that with all kinds of generations that have been here at Hilldale UMC. I want to go to our Bible first and I want to look about what God thinks about you, not what you think about yourself, but what God thinks about you. It's from the book of Psalms. That's in the Old Testament, chapter 139, verses 13 and 14. And here's what it says. It says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. I think that describes God as being the most wonderful artist just look around. What has he made? Well, he's made you. He made Miss Betty. He's made the trees, the sky, all the things outside around us. And I think God is a wonderful artist. And God tells us in those scriptures that he thinks you are the most wonderful thing he's ever created. In fact, he knit you together in your mom's tummy before you were even born. He made your personality, your thoughts, the way you think and feel about yourself. And just like Miss Betty here, she is in constant motion, if you know Miss Betty. If she is not taking care of a kid or doing work here on the hill, she is constantly moving her hands, weaving the thread in and out, looping over and over until she creates something that she wanted to. Like a blanket right there. Miss Betty makes blankets and then she gives them to Operation Christmas Child and they are gifted to kids around the world. She makes scarves and hats. But imagine if that blanket came to life and it just didn't like that it was a blanket and it wanted to be a scarf or a hat. God doesn't want us to feel like that. God wants us to know that we are wonderful, wonderful and he made us just the way he wanted us to be. And we want you to know that you are wonderful and you are made uniquely, beautifully by our one creator, God. Will you pray with me today, friends? And let's give a big thanks to Miss Betty for being with me here today because I know you all miss seeing her as much as she miss seeing all of you. Yeah. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for making us uniquely wonderful before we were even out of our mom's tummy. You loved us and made us. Help us to realize 
that we are wonderful and you love us and help us to share that with others. Amen. Oh, and friends, don't forget, you can share love by going out to our website and registering to make some Valentines for our shut-in ministry. And then I'll turn around and bring one to you. Bye for now. See you next week. Good morning, beautiful people of God. It is so good to be with you this morning. We are here on this fantastic Sunday, and we have got some beautiful Tennessee weather outside. The sun has started to come out a little bit, and it's already the warmest right now that it's supposed to be all day. And so I'm joining you here today as we begin our new series called Love Yourself. Now, each and every week that I come up here, I call you the beautiful people of God. And I don't know if you've noticed that, but I wonder sometimes if we actually believe that to be true. And so this morning, as we start out, a comment that I would love for you to throw down into the comments on Facebook or wherever you're watching this morning or later in the week is, what is something that you love about yourself. I want you to think about this now. What is something that you love about yourself? Now, as you begin to get ready to type that, I want you to be thinking about that, and I want this to be about you. I don't want you to take it and deflect it and make it about someone else, but what is something that you love about yourself? Now, We're going to be talking about over the next three weeks as we build up towards Valentine's Day what it means to actually love ourselves. Now, I think when I say that, at first we begin to think that this is some self-help mumbo-jumbo that we can find in in the book section at Barnes & Noble. But we're going to be taking a biblical and godly look at what it means to love ourselves and why on earth Would it be a focus of ours for a few weeks to talk about what it looks like to love ourselves? So, if you'll remember from last week, we ended our This Is Us series by talking through the great commandments. And so I want you to hear them again this morning, and we are going to dive a little bit deeper into one of the sections of this. It says, this is in Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Now, now, this is familiar to you. If you grew up in the church, you've heard this countless times. We've talked about it over the last few weeks. <clears throat> Jesus replies, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. You must love your neighbor, verse 39, as yourself. Now, we don't really dive into this a whole lot, but if we, if we read this this morning and we begin to dive into it, we begin to find that loving ourself is a prerequisite for being able to love our neighbor. As a matter of fact, I would say that loving others starts with loving ourselves, Now, we believe that it starts with loving God, like we said in the first one. But after we figure out what it means to love God, we then begin to look at what it means to love our neighbor. That is one of the essential marks of the Christian life. But if we don't love ourselves, how can we love our neighbors as we love ourselves? Now, this in Matthew actually comes back from Leviticus, verses 19 through 18. And you might think it's strange to find verses about love in Leviticus, but it's there. Leviticus 19, verse 18, You must not take revenge, nor hold a grudge against any of your people. Instead, you must love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So as we read this, it's implied that we won't take revenge against our neighbors because we would love them the way that we love ourselves. Therefore, we wouldn't be taking revenge against ourselves. We would not hold a grudge against our neighbors. Because we're going to love them the way we love ourselves. And implied in that is that we're not holding a grudge against ourselves. How many of us out there today are still holding a grudge even against ourselves? Now, when we begin to talk about what it looks like to love ourselves so that we can fulfill the mission and purpose of Jesus Christ, to love God with all that we have, and to love our neighbors as ourselves... When we begin to do this, I believe there's some competing extremes 
that we need to work through on either end of the spectrum for us to land in this place of a godly understanding of the humility it takes to love ourselves the way that God loves us. And so this morning, I want to kind of point those out because, you see, if you were looking from the outside in and you looked at our political discourse over the last couple of years and really over the last decades, you would think that we think pretty highly of ourselves. One thing we have found in our politics is that we believe everything we think. Everything that we think is the right way to think and it is the right thing. As a matter of fact, we can never be wrong. And if we are wrong, we would never admit that we were wrong because then we would lose constituents or our party might lose power. And not only do we believe everything we think, not only can we never be wrong, but everybody who doesn't believe like me is an idiot. That is what we put out on the TV 24 hours a day. That is what our discourse looks like online. I want you to go read the comments on Facebook for our county mask mandate. You can do it right now. I want you to go read those comments and see if I am wrong. We believe everything we think. We can never be wrong. And anybody who doesn't believe like us is an idiot. Now, it would appear that we think pretty daggum highly of ourselves. When, uh, when my wife and I were getting ready to get, to get married, we went and somebody was, was giving us some advice. And we got some wonderful advice from people. And we got some other advice that, that I would never tell anybody else in this world. But one of the pieces of advice that we got is that you're always going to love your spouse, but you may not like them all the time. Now, that's never been true for me, and I'm sure if your spouse is in the same room with you, that's never been true for you. But I wonder if we don't believe that about ourselves a little bit, that perhaps we think we love ourselves, but we don't really ever like ourselves. Hey, let me ask you it this way. When you look in the mirror, what is the first thing you see? When you look in the mirror in the beginning of the morning, whenever it is, what is the first thing you see? When you look at pictures of yourself, what is the first thing do you see? Do you look at the picture of yourself and think, wow, I look pretty good. This is pretty awesome. I'm pretty beautiful. The pastor tells me every week I'm one of the beautiful people of God. He's absolutely right. That's not what we think. We see our many chins or our teeth or our, our brows or whatever it is, and we see these parts of ourselves that we don't like, and we begin to tear them down and degrade them, usually to the point that we don't even want to look at pictures of ourselves. And I'm just as guilty. One of my least favorite things in the world, and you wouldn't think this about a preacher, but it's 100% true. One of the least favorite things in the world for me is to hear my own voice. When we're in the office and Jessica begins editing things that we're putting together and I hear my own voice in the background, it sounds like fingernails on a chalkboard to me. I can't stand it. I have to go put on headphones or close the door or go somewhere else because I just can't listen to myself talk anymore. Perhaps you've had the same feeling about listening to me talk. I wouldn't even blame you. See, here I am doing that exact same thing. Now, I want to share some statistics with you today, and these come from the National Alliance on Mental Health, and here's why I'm going to share with you some statistics on mental health. We are called to love our neighbors, and we are called to love them by loving them the way that we love ourselves. Now, some of us may be found in these statistics here today. And if that is the case, we want to begin to see and understand ourselves in the way that God sees and understands us. We want to get the care that we need so that we can love ourselves and love our neighbors. If we don't find ourselves in the statistics here this morning, then we need to continue to love ourselves so that we can love our neighbors who may be here in these statistics this morning. The suicide rate in the United States has increased 35% since 1999. The suicide rate, the amount of people who do not believe they should be in this world to such an extent that they attempt or complete suicide has increased by 35%, one-third more than it was just 20 years ago by the statistics that are in. It says that 21% of U.S. adults experience mental illness. This is a stat from 2019. Imagine what that statistic is going to be when we get them back for 2020. 
21% of U.S. adults have experienced mental illness in 2019. 21% of homeless people have serious mental health conditions. 37% of those who are incarcerated have been diagnosed with mental illness. 70.4% of juveniles, of youth in the juvenile justice system, have been diagnosed with mental illness. 41% of our VA patients have been diagnosed with mental health or substance abuse in their life. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in people ages 10 to 34. 10 to 34. 90% of those who die by suicide exhibited symptoms of mental illness in the year prior. And that comes from interviews with their friends and their family. 78% of those, three quarter, or more than three quarters of those who die by suicide are men, are male. Lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth are four times more likely to die from suicide and to commit suicide. Transgender adults are 12 times more likely. Now, here's the ones that drill down into who is sitting around us here in these pews and who is sitting next to you at home right now. 5% of all adults in 2019 thought about committing suicide. 5%. That's one out of 20 now, we were going through our membership roles the other day and beginning to, to call folks and make sure we're in touch with folks. And when we began to break this down by this stat, that means 20 people in our church have thought about suicide this last year. 20 people. 20 people that you know, that you consider a part of your family, that God has called us to love and to care for as a church have thought that their life is so worthless that it is worth taking and ending in the last year. And that's on, again, 2019 and earlier statistics. That doesn't even account for what's happened in 2020. Now, the statistics get a little bit worse as we get younger. If you're between the ages of 18 and 25, those of you who have young adults in the household, 12% have thought about committing suicide in the last year. That's one in 10. That's over, excuse me, one out of 10. If you can name more than 10 people ages 18 to 25, you know someone who's thought about committing suicide. When it comes to high school students, 19% have thought about committing suicide this year. That's one out of five. One out of five have thought about committing suicide this year. And the delay between having mental health symptoms and getting care is 11 years. Now, you may be asking, Pastor, why are these related to loving ourselves? You see, loving ourselves isn't vanity, it's sanity. This is a quote from a young lady named Katrina Mayer. Loving ourselves or loving yourself isn't vanity, it's sanity. You see, God has given us people here in our community that we are to love. And if we cannot love ourselves, we are not going to be able to love the people that are a part of our community. And so it is imperative for ourselves, for us, that we see ourselves the way that God has created us to be, the way that God sees us so that we can see other people the way that God created them to be and the way that God sees them. There are people in our church crying out to be loved, so much so that there are 20 of them who have most likely thought about taking their own life in the past year. Some of them may be sitting next to you right now, and some of them are you. And if that is you, I want to tell you this morning, you are loved by God, by the people of God, by your family, by people in this world. And I know that sometimes it just doesn't feel like it, but it is true. 
You are precious. You are beautiful. You are cherished. You are important. You have a purpose. You are a beautiful creation and were made on purpose with a purpose. Now, for those of us who are continuing to love those who may be in a place like this, there's this saying that's it's usually attributed to C.S. Lewis, but it was actually Rick Warren and the Purpose Driven Life. And it says, humility isn't thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. I'm going to say that again. Humility isn't thinking less of yourself or thinking worse of yourself. Humility is thinking of yourself less. So how do we love ourselves without the pride that we find and the arrogance that we find in the world around us sometimes? Well, I think it starts with looking at, at Genesis 1.27, and I'm going to share that scripture with you right now. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them. You see, in the, in the Christian tradition, especially the Protestant tradition, we have talked about something called original sin, as if we were originally broken and it is carried through through all of humanity. And while sin is definitely a part of humanity and a part of this world, I believe in something called original righteousness. We were created in the divine image of God the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. We were created to be in relationship with one another and with God. We were made into the image of God. Somehow, through the color of our skin, through our gender or sex, through whatever it is, the things that separate us and make us different, there is still something divinely related and the same in each one of us. This divine image of God, this spark is within us and it has made us beautiful. God looked down and said that everything was good and when God made human creation, he said that it was very good. We were made in original righteousness. To be like God, not to be God ourselves, but to be in relationship with God, to take on some of the responsibilities of God here on this world, to name and to take care of the creation that God had made, and to love each other the way that God loves us and the way that we are called to love God. There's this beautiful scripture in Psalm, you've probably heard it before, Psalm 139, verses 13 through 14. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. That I know very well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Psalm tells us that we are beautifully and wonderfully made. And uh, I'm going to ask Miss Jessica right now. Miss Jessica, did we get any comments about the things that people love about themselves? We got some? How many? Just tell me how many. If you want to tell me some of the things that they said, that would be fantastic too. We got about five or so. Isaac Lamb says he loves that he is persistent when things are hard. Isaac, I love that about you too, one of our children, one of our youth here in this church. Noah loves that he is tall. Noah, we love that about you too. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. You and Isaac are children of God, and this church loves you. Kathy Bearden says she loves her sense of humor. Miss Kathy, we love that about you too. We see you dance around and create lyrics. Here is the staff. And I don't know if we've shared the Flavor Flav video that you made. Uh, we did. We did share it. We love your sense of humor too, Miss Kathy. You are a beautiful part of God's creation. And then we're talking about how they love each other. That's right. Now, I honestly thought we might not get any comments about what we love about ourselves. And why might that be? Because it is so difficult to find the good in ourselves. We look around and we begin to see the good in other people, but we take the good that we find in ourselves and we begin to tear it down and pick it apart and think that it's not as good as somebody else's good. But you see, the good in someone else doesn't detract from yours. The beauty of one flower doesn't take away from the beauty of another flower. 
The flowers just bloom. They don't compare themselves and then wither and wilt away. They remind us of the beauty that is found in this world. You are a part of the beautiful creation of God. And when we begin to take what God has given us and to downplay it and to trample it and to throw it away and to pretend like it doesn't exist, we are actually harming God and this world because we are not sharing the gifts that God has given us. You see, we were gifted to be gifts. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a couple of weeks. But you, my brothers and sisters, Beloved children of God, you were created on purpose, with a purpose. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. Now, I want you to catch in this. None of this has to do with anything that we've done. We were created in the image of God. We were beautifully and wonderfully made. We were given gifts, and we were given a purpose. None of that is something that we have done on our own. So when we begin to balance what it looks like to be humble, but to love ourselves without being prideful, we can find the ability to be humble by understanding that we are who God created us to be and that we are beautifully and wonderfully made because we are the image of God here on this earth and that everything that we were given is a gift from God. When we begin to think of ourselves as as, as bootstrap people and we made it on our own and we're a self-made man and things like that, we begin to take and put down the things of God. We forget the people who came before us. We forget the people who helped us to get to where we are. And we forget that there are people who don't have the same advantages that we do. We are the image of God and we are beautifully and wonderfully made. But none of that is something that we did for ourselves. And none of that is even something that somebody else did for us. It is God Almighty. And so we get together and worship on Sundays and we praise God for all that God has done for us. But this world is a better place because you are in it. Because you are the image of God. You are a beautiful and wonderful creation. You have gifts that this world needs. You have a purpose, no matter your age, no matter your health, no matter what it is. You have a purpose here on this earth, and it is not done. And we love you, and this world needs you. You see, caring for yourself is not selfishness. It's holiness. Now, thinking more of ourselves than perhaps we ought to, I might not go as far as to say that's holiness. But when we take care of the temple, when we take care of the body, the spirit, the mind that God has given us, we are taking care of God's creation. We are a part of the world that God loves and that God would give his life for. That is our model for care for others and for care for ourselves. You know, this week in the midst of everything, one of the things that is wonderful about being a part of the church is you get to see this in action, even when you least expect it. And in a world where we can seem so divided, in a world where all we hear on the news, it seems like is some of the negative things that are going on, I want to lift up a moment where I saw the kingdom of God in action this week. We sent out an email to our congregation talking about what it looks like to come back to in-person gatherings here in the church in just a week or two because we see, continue to see things in Montgomery County and around Clarksville trending down with the statistics. And we have been prayerfully waiting and anticipating being back together. And when we sent that email out, we got an email back from a lady in our congregation who I believe showed us an example of what it looks like to love themselves And because of that, to love others. I'm going to brag on you, Miss Carol Freeman. So I hope you don't get mad at me for it. But Miss Carol sent an email back this week and she said she was getting ready to to go and get the vaccine. She was getting vaccinated this past week. And that we were able to go and do that. And that she was grateful for the opportunity to have that here in our community. But that it was difficult to get registered if we weren't good with technology. And that some other members that are older in our congregation had called around and talked to one another and had figured out how to get each other registered for the vaccine. And they realized that some folks who maybe couldn't get out wouldn't be able to get 
to the vaccine places, even if it was time for them to go. And so without knowing it, just by talking to each other a little bit, by caring for themselves and going through the process of taking care of themselves, and then empathizing with what it must be like for some others around them to face these same tasks, they have started calling those in our congregation who are eligible to go get the vaccine and to ask them if they want to go get it. And if they aren't able to register online, they're going to register them for them. If they aren't able to, to get, the, get in their car or take transportation to go and to get the vaccine, they're going to go pick them up and sit with them for hours while they get their vaccine. These people who have already been vaccinated and who it's safe for them to be able to do this. You see, when we love ourselves, we open up the door for God to use us to love other people. I cannot be more excited for these wonderful, amazing women who looked at our congregation and said, you know what, it was a little hard for me to get registered. It was a little difficult to make time to go, and I bet there are other people that it is even harder for and even more difficult for to get there, and we are going to make sure that we provide a way for them to do that. And in taking care of themselves and loving themselves, they realized there was a way to love each other and to love this community. My friends, that is the kingdom of God. That is what it looks like to love our neighbor the way that we love ourselves. It's not a huge new multi-million dollar business and something that reaches around the world. It's people realizing that to get the care they need that others may not be able to and then making a way one by one by one. Whatever they need, they will make sure they get it so that they can be taken care of. Now, my friends, we are not perfect, and that's not what it means to love ourselves. We are an imperfect people, made in the image of a perfect God. It seems like a contradiction in and of itself. But here's what I want you to take away from this moment today. Finding the beauty in yourself is not arrogance. Caring for yourself is not selfishness. Understanding the way that God sees you and created you and gifted you is not vanity. It's honoring God. Because God gave you those things and made you that way. And God looks down and sees you as his beautiful child, no matter how you see yourself. You see, we can be a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. We can be a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. My friends, you hear me say it sometimes, but I want you to hear it this morning. I love you. You are beautiful. You have a purpose. You are gifted. And God is calling on you in this moment and always to love yourself, even in spite of yourself. Because you are a beautiful creation of God. And God needs you to be able to love the others in our community that need to feel God's love. For the next few weeks, we are going to dive a little more deeply each week into what it looks like to love ourselves. But let us start there this week. Let us pray. Lord, dare we say with humility that we are glad that you created us We are grateful for who you made us. Lord, thank you that you have made us beautifully and wonderfully, that we were created in your image with a purpose bigger than ourselves and with gifts that this world needs. God, we love you. 
And we want to love you and our neighbors with everything that we have. But sometimes the person that we love least in this world is ourselves. Lord, help us to love ourselves the way that you would have us to. And Lord, for those in our community that need your loving care, may they hear this morning in our words, in our thoughts and comments and prayers and the way that we care for each other. May they realize that they are a beautiful creation of yours, that they are loved, that they are important and precious and cherished, and that they are needed here in this world. Lord, this world needs your healing touch. And so do each of one of us as a work in progress. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
My friends, the God of all creation is in love with you and ask that we love ourselves the way that God already loves us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.